Welcome to United Church of Hyde Park. Welcome. I just want to say up front that I really miss you all. I know you're out there. I believe we get comments, we get feedback, uh, but there's nothing like being able to touch people and hug people. And um, I just remember so familiarly how when church began, people would kind of make their way in. People have certain seats they sit in here. And just to see uh, members and visitors come and and sit down and for us to experience community. This is different, but this still is United. So I wanna welcome you to United. Uh, each week I drive around in my car and I have been looking at the garden work. I've been looking at the grass. As you guys can hear, even if you don't know, it has been raining a lot and it has been feeding the grass. And one of the beautiful things about May is the grass the landscape always looks so beautiful in May. It's like the grass is like bragging. It's like, it just looks so rich. It looks so plush. There's something about April showers that brings beautiful grass and beautiful landscape in May. And so it is with God's people. There's something about the ways in which we are loved and cared for that cause us to shine. And one of those ways that we shine, one of those ways that we are watered, is we gather together in community. We gather on Sundays, we read our word, we listen to an inspirational music, but an important part of who we are that causes us to shine year round is gathering together. So we are gathered here today in our living rooms, our kitchens, our beds. We are gathered here today to be watered. I want to welcome you to United Church of Hyde Park. Thank you so much for joining us today. That heart is sparing, sent him to die, I sacred take him.
This is your call to worship. Please follow along with me on the screen. For those that are listening to us via Zoom, just allow your ears to take in this moment. In you, Lord, I have taken refuge. Let me never be put to shame. Come quickly to my rescue. Be my rock of refuge, a strong fortress to save me. Since you are my rock and my fortress, Lead and guide me for the sake of your name. Come, let us join together on the journey of faith. Come, Come. let us follow Jesus, who is the way. Chapter 13 and 14, beginning with verse 34. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. If you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him because he abides with you and he will be in you. 
I will not leave you orphaned. I am Father. And I will love them and reveal myself to them. According to the Gospel of John, these words were said by Jesus in a farewell address to his disciples. The incident took place in the upper room at the time of the Last Supper. And unlike the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, and Luke, in the Gospel of John, there is no breaking of bread, no sharing of a cup of wine. But there is a, a one difference, there's foot washing. And the second difference is this rather long address, the final words of Jesus to his disciples. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another by this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. According to Jewish law, there were over 600 different rules that the, the, Jew, the followers of Judaism were to practice and observe. But Jesus cut through all of those rules and according to John, gave this one commandment, a new commandment, that you love one another. This is most interesting, I think. It's a, it's a startling way to simplify the love of God and the love of humanity. This is the one thing we are to do. This is the test we are to pass. Usually the month of May is the, is the month when people in various uh, academic institutions are preparing for their final exams. They don't know what the questions will be on the final exam. And in many ways, what Jesus is giving the disciples is their final exam. But he's telling them what the final question will be. What is it that they have to answer to? Well, it's this, that you love one another. I wonder how well you and I pass the test. Jesus gave us a lot of help in knowing how to pass that test with our neighbors. When we look outside of ourselves, we know how we're supposed to love the stranger. He, he told us the parable of the Good Samaritan and with the wounded stranger, we are to offer help and rescue and solace and comfort and even healing. And what are we to do about loving relatives? Well, he gave us the parable of the prodigal son. We're to welcome our relatives, even the difficult ones. And we're to make sure they're, they know that they are loved by us. And we welcome them home and we welcome them into our midst and we cherish them and demonstrate this in every way we can. What are we to do with the sick? How do we love the sick? Well, we offer healing for them. How are we to love the hungry? We're to feed them just as Jesus fed 5,000 hungry people on the mountainside. What are we to do to love old people? Well, we're to care for them and provide for them just as Jesus provided for his mother. What are we to do to love those who, are, who declare themselves our enemies? Well, we're to be reconciled with them as best we can, to reach out our hand to the people. According to
in the Southern Poverty uh, Legal Center, there are uh, over 1,000 organized hate groups operating in the United States today, at least four of them here in the Chicago area. Neo-Nazis, the Ku Klux Klan, white nationalists, segregationists, those who spew the gospel of hatred and of mistrust of anyone who doesn't look like them or doesn't share their political views of segregation and separation of the races. We see them. We see them parading in front of our legislative centers. We see them armed with their automatic weapons, spewing their doctrine of hatred, and we wonder to ourselves, what is going on in their hearts that they have turned out to be this kind of human being? In Luke 45, 645, we read, good persons bring good things out of the good stored in their hearts, and evil persons bring evil things out of the evil stored up in their hearts. <clears throat> For out of the overflow of their hearts, their mouths speak. The words of Jesus describing some of the people, maybe all of us in the world today. So the secret, apparently, is to look inward at our hearts and see what is stored in them. It's kind of like spring cleaning this particular Sunday. It's the sixth Sunday after Easter, and according to the lectionary, every three years is a time for house cleaning, or heart cleaning at least. So today, I invite you to join me in looking inside your heart. Love, in many ways, measures our stature. The more we love, the bigger we are. There is no smaller package in the world than a man all wrapped up inside himself. In contrast, the person of faith is one who is being grasped by the power of love. Love measures our stature. If we fail in love, we fail in all else. Nothing is right for us. Love, and you're a success, whether or not the world thinks so. The highest purpose of Christianity, which is primarily a way of life rather than a system of doctrine, is to love one another. And every night before we go to sleep, each of us should ask one question of ourselves. In what ways did I not love today? This question and the answer we give helps to form us as persons who can pass the love test. For if we fail in love, we fail in all else. Bishop Richard of Chichester in England in the year 1253, that's a long time ago, was on the outs with the King of England, who had it in for him and was refusing to uh, provide him with the resources he needed as a bishop. So the Bishop of Chichester, barefoot, walked around his diocese to visit all of his churches and help them all become more faithful followers of Jesus. And he gave us this prayer. Thanks be to thee, our Lord Jesus Christ, for all the benefits which thou hast given us, for all the pains and insults which thou hast borne for us. O merciful Redeemer, friend and brother, may we know thee more clearly, love thee more dearly, and follow thee more nearly. A young composer 
in America took this prayer and turned it into a song to be sung as part of a stage show. Day by day, day by day, dear Lord, three things I pray. To see thee more clearly, love thee more dearly, follow thee more nearly, day by day. Time to look in our hearts to see what love is there. Because love measures our stature. As Christians, it's love that is our calling. Make love your aim, said the Apostle Paul to the people in Corinth. If I speak in the tongues of angel of mortals and of angels, but do not have love. I am a noisy gong and a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away all my possessions and if I hand over my body so that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Believe. all things, hopes all things, endures all things, love never ends. Now I know in part, then I will know fully, even as I have been fully known, and now faith, hope, and love abide, these three, and the greatest of these is love. Words for healing the heart. Love is our calling. It's the calling of this congregation. And we demonstrate it by the power of God and the power of the Holy Spirit in our midst, in our life together. We perform acts of kindness, acts of caring, acts of mutual support, acts of love. And this is the way we respond to Jesus when he said, I give you a new commandment that you love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. Amen.
Okay, I got so into that I forgot <laughs> that I was next on the screen. Sometimes the words and the spirit just call you in a, in a deep abiding way. It is offering time. Um, I hope that you guys were inspired and challenged today as you listen to uh, Reverend Paul's words. I'm reminded of math tests and I don't know if you uh, recall this, some of you ha are very seasoned. It might be hard to recall that. <laughs> but I remember when we used to do math tests, the first, ma the first question would always be easy. And each question would get a little bit more difficult, each math problem. And so at first you started, you felt a little bit confident, but each one built a little more upon the first one. And so it was kind of testing your, your skills. And so sometimes love can be easy and natural. It's like that first one on the math test. But then sometimes love can be challenging and it can be harder. And it can be more difficult and it calls on those skills. It calls on the journey. We are asking you to share your financial resources and for some it may be easy. And yet for others, it may be harder. And yet it is all a part of the love test. Sharing our financial resources when it's easy and when it's hard, being faithful. We thank you again and again for being consistent. Even though we've been closed, we've been amazed at the level of giving of so many members. And we call you to be consistent to that, to continue to give, to continue to pass the test. There are a multitude of ways that you can share your financial resources with us. You can stop by the office and drop it in the slot. You can mail it. Um, that information should be on the screen, as well as you can try this wonderful technology. I was so amazed when one of my seniors, 87, tried it, and it worked. So you can try electronically as well. All of those resources are available to you for you to share your resources with us. Thank you.
Let us pray. Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus. Tis so sweet to trust Jesus with our financial resources. Tis so sweet to trust Jesus in these times. Tis so sweet to trust Jesus on the journey. We lift up our financial resources as an act of love. We ask, Lord, that your light shines, that it not only shines in our church and in our hearts, but it shines in our community, in our world, that it especially shines in dark spaces. In Jesus' name, amen. Again, it's so good to have you all with us here in faith today. We're so glad you stopped by United Church of High Park. We are continuing to pray. We have a couple of announcements. Um, if you want to be on our email list and you're not receiving emails, please uh, send us a message. If you're not getting our emails, and we'll include you. Each week we do a briefing on what's happening in our churches and ways that you can get involved. One of the things that we mentioned in our email this week is now that we are in a state that requires us to wear masks in public, we want to make sure that all of our members have masks. If you are in need of a mask, please let us know. If you're willing to volunteer, uh, please let us know. Um, uh, due to the generosity of a High Park community member, uh, Dr. Nikki, um, we have uh, gained already 10 masks and we have somebody else that has stepped up. So if you need a mask, please let us know. We want to get that to you so that you can be safe when you are going outside of your home. As well, after church today is coffee hour. We've been trying it a couple of Sundays. I hear that Zoom is back up. I see that we today. Every Wednesday on United, you can come out and join us on Zoom, and you can join us for, we're trying to tell jokes that are funny, we're trying to check in with one another, and to keep each other lifted up. It seems like no matter who I talk to, we eventually talk about COVID, and it's hard not to because it has an impact. And so those Wednesday gatherings are very important because it allows us to try to uplift our spirits. I want you to know, United, we're working on a couple other things. We're working on a game night. We're also working on additional Bible study in addition to the one that meets 930 on Sunday. If there are things you have need of, please let us know. We are attempting to be united, and I have been just amazed. Um, I don't know what we get as a community, but I'd say maybe we're close to an A as a community on the love test. I don't know. I don't want to be cocky or arrogant. I want to keep a spirit of humility. Um, but it's been so reassuring to have United be kind and thoughtful and connected with one another. Um, thank you for being with us today. We are going to have a closing hymn, and then we will have a benediction. And if you want to stay around for more, join us at Coffee Hour. guide up all you with his shepherds will he fold you God be with you till we meet again till we meet till we meet till we meet at Jesus first meet till we meet Let us pray.
Dear Lord, sometimes love is easy, it's natural, and we thrive in it. And yet sometimes love can be hard and difficult and it challenges us. But it is still a test you give to us. It is still a test you lay before us. So until we meet again, may you be with us. May you be with us. And may you help us to reach down into the best part of ourselves. May your spirit guide and lead us until we meet again. God be with you all. In Jesus' name, amen.